Just in time for the holiday season, X Tool has sent me another tool in their scan tool line. And this here is the D5S. This here is a four system scanner. It scans your uh, engine computer, your transmission computer. It also scans your ABS module and also your SRS module. Um, it comes with uh, 15 additional special functions uh, in the main menu. And it also has free lifetime updates. And again, that's very important. Um, again, I'm just unboxing it here. As you can see, all the standard cables, USB. Um, um, it's not USB. I mean, I'm uh, sorry, uh, OBD2 cable. Here's a unit. Here's a USB cable. So let's just set this to the side. And what I'll do is um, I'll go ahead, set this up, update it, come back, and we'll take a look through the menu before we hop into the car uh, put this to the test and scan the vehicle. All right, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and jump into the usage of the scan tool, walk through the menu really quickly and grab some live data. But before I do that, I do want to tell you that if you look in the description of this video or the pinned comment, there is a code that will give you an additional 15% off. This scan tool almost always has a coupon code already on Amazon. And if you use my code, you will get an additional 15% off. This is a perfect time to pick up one of these. It's um, you know holiday season coming up and this thing for the price, it is a good bang for your buck. And trust me, anybody who gets their hands on one of these would not, I mean, would appreciate it a lot. All right, so if you're just going through the menu really quick, uh, again, one quick thing else is that this is based off the Linux, so it's not uh, the typical Android operating system that you would um, encounter with the X tools or any other uh, or any other um, um, scan tool. So keep that in mind. Um, so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, auto scan is what it is. We're not going to worry about auto scan to check. Diagnosis is going to be more for if you're going to um, put it in the car information in manually. For example, we click this up pops this menu right here. You can pick America, Asia, Australia, China, Europe, and you just pick your respective car, put in your respective information such as make, model, year, uh, probably even VIN code, who knows, and you can use that. Um, OBD2 is, is what it is, an OBD2 scanner. So we won't jump into that because it'll automatically scan the car right now. We'll just take a look at that in a minute. Special functions, now, now you do wanna go in this menu. There's a lot of special functions. There's 15 special functions here, and as you can see, um, that makes the scan too much more valuable. A lot of times you get four system scanners. Um, they only have just a couple, if, if, if at all, any um, special functions. But this thing here has 15 special functions on top of being a, um, a scanner that will fully scan four modules and has very good graphing capabilities. We'll check that out here in a minute. All right, so updates are just what they are. You click this right here. If there's any updates available, um, uh, they, it will show up here. And more is just a little bit more stuff you can do. Like you can uh, edit your account information here. Um, you got your diagnostic reports here. We'll take a look at that in a second. And also you have your settings for the unit here as well. So you can take a look at all that if you are, when you pick the tool up. So now let's go back to auto scan. We hit auto scan, automatic uh, identification. And so now the scan tool is communicating with my car. And in a second, it will pop up with all the appropriate information, letting us know that it actually communicated with the car. And there you have it, automatic detection. There you have it, it automatically picked up everything. VIN number, make, model, and year. Hit OK. And the car's already running, so we'll just hit OK here and let it go ahead and jump right in. The uh, automatic, we're going to go ahead. You can pick the system you want to scan if you just want to scan one system. Like, for example, if you go into here, you can pick whichever system you want. In my case, although this is a four system scanner, you do see five modules here. That's because in my car, there is no one ABS module. There is a uh, combination of the EBCM and also the PBCM, which is electronic brake control module and the parking brake control module respectively. So let's go back. We're just gonna go ahead and do an automatic scan. It's gonna be really fast because first of all, 
it's only five modules. And second of all, um, this version of Linux that's on this tablet is pretty snappy. Okay, electronic brake module, we have a code. Let's just see what it says. Probably nothing but a communication code. Let's just see what we got because I almost always have a, one of those here. Let's go to read DTC. Yes, some sort of communication module. I mean, communication code doesn't mean much. Uh, so you can almost always, I mean, even in a newer car, I've actually seen that happen. It's just, if the computer's expecting any a data event and don't see it, it's gonna throw a little code and a lot of times it doesn't mean anything. But hey, do check into that. Your models may vary with that, but that's been my experience. All right, so now we're gonna go back and as you can see, we've just read all four modules, no codes except for one, but hey, Let's go, but what we're here for, we want to see some live data. We want to see some grafting. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Let's jump into the ECM. And I will pick my LLT. This is a front wheel drive. And we're going to go straight to live data. We're going to just go to engine data. Make it simple because everybody, if you watch me, you know that I love fuel trims and you know that I love oxygen sensor data. So let's go ahead and take a look at, I guess let's go ahead and do oxygen sensor data because I think eventually one of my oxygen sensors is going to be, need to be replaced anyway. So I always keep an eye on that. So I might as well just take a look at it now. Let's scroll through. First, let's just scroll through all the data points here. I just want to show you all the live data. It picks up every, I mean, every manufacturer specific um, data pit. So, and, it's, and, and you can scroll right through it. As you can see how snappy this is, and that's it. That's, and, that, and don't forget, this is just for the ECM. This is not for any other module. So there's plenty of live data on this thing that you can always you know, refer to it and make diagnosis with. So let's go back up to oxygen sensors. This is what I want here. One, two, three, and four. And hit show selected. I didn't, I didn't tell you, there we go. Now, as we see, you just got the normal list of the data's uh, values here, which is, you know, you, this is good. You can work with this and you can see, but if you want to see each individual graph, you just hit the little blue dot right here with the down arrow. What happens is it drops that, um, that uh, I guess, drop down menu and shows you that graph, which is pretty cool um, that you can do each individual one as such like this. And as you can see, sensor two uh, looking good. Sensor one should be oscillating as always, oscillating, and sensor two should be pretty steady. Let's go here to the next one, sorry. Should be pretty steady like so, but what's cooler than that, if you just hit curve combination, it'll graft all four at the same time. So basically, if you look at the um, red and the blue, they are oscillating quite a lot, and they should because that's the upstream sensor. The yellow and the green are the downstream sensors, and they are a little bit more steady. Though the yellow, the, um, the bank one sensor two, has always been sort of um, finicky, if you will, if you see it. But again, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad. Again, you know when your, uh, I wouldn't say your oxygen sensor, well, your oxygen sensor could be bad, but you know if your catalytic converter is bad, um, because the exact same waveform you get on uh, sensor one is the exact same waveform you get on sensor two because it's because the catalytic converter is not working at all and the gases are passing right through without being heated up and without being broken down and letting out through the tailpipe. So anyway, um, sensors look fine for the most part, but I'm always keeping an eye on my uh, bank one sensor two. Every time I make a video, it's just another data point for me. And so maybe one day, who knows, may see a video of me actually making that repair. All right, so let's go back out. So what we want to do next, uh, we're just going to take a look at a little bit more live data here in a different, let's just say, if you go through, now don't forget, this is just all engine data here. I mean, look at this, but it's kind of, all of this stuff is in the ECU, but I think this is more like broken up. Let's take a look at the misfire data. I shouldn't have any misfiles in this call, but I'm just curious of just what it's going to show. Um, doesn't really show, yeah, exactly, zero, so it shouldn't be anything here. There's, there's no misfires on this car. Uh, okay, we got 14. Okay, the cycles of misfire data. That just means that it's checking for what I believe is what's happening here, but actually the misfire counter is not checking anything because I think the cycles is that it checks, it, it does a check for a certain period of time 
and then it'll reset if I'm not mistaken. So this is just so if you want to just check this out, just, just look at this. If you was having a problem with misfiring fuel delivery system, you could just go ahead and get all of this data. I mean, this is just incredible, just the amount of data that you can get here. Um, instrument cluster data. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Um, ignition. Ex I mean, this is amazing. Again, this thing fully scans those modules. Doesn't just scan them on the surface. This is a full-blown, all-out reading of all manufacturer-specific PID, data PIDs for these four modules in your car. Again, very informative. And again, you can make a lot of diagnosis with that. So let's just back out here and go back to, let's look at another module. Let's go to the, um, to the, to the um, transmission control module, which should be some of the same data we might've saw in the previous screen somewhere, but again, it compartmentalize it like this. And again, if you're not familiar with the freeze frame data, freeze frame data just tells you if you have a code in that module, it tells you, it gives you a snapshot of all of the data PIDs at that point. Well, not all the data PIDs, but whatever data PID is in that freeze frame. I think it's all OBD2. It will show you all what data points was happening at the exact moment that the light was set. So that way, you know, you can make it maybe the RPMs Maybe the, um, uh, the, 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 the temperature, on the, uh, the, uh, the IAT temperature, maybe the uh, barometric pressure, and so on and so forth can help you say, huh, maybe I can start narrowing down where I need to search for an issue with why I got this check engine light, for, for example. All right, so now let's go to live data here. Um, uh, solenoid valve data. Let's just say this is good. So say if you was um, having like some you felt like maybe you were having some slipping or some long shifts in your um, transmission. Well, you know, you can kind of um, just look and see what you got going on here. They got some pressures here. Um, they got some um, other other commands to say if it's on or off. You can kind of correlate that with go back here to your shift data. Shift data is just going to tell you just basically um, when the car shifts and gives you how again for example like if you have a a, a a gear shift commanded is it actually shifting in that gear and how fast is it shifting in that gear because that could tell you hey maybe some friction plates are going bad for example you know i'm just making up something here but that it should, it should get you on the right track for example if you're having issues um let's go to i don't know tcc data and again these i'm just showing you these two because the engine control module module and the transmission module are really going to be the two biggest modules that's going to have the biggest bearing on how you diagnose issues with check engine lights. Because again, not saying that other modules don't make a difference because they do. But I'm talking about most of the time when you have real drivability issues, check engine lights, transmission module and the engine control module usually are going to be the modules that you're going to be needing data from. And this thing does it well. I mean, really well. And look at that. Let's just look at um. Let's just look at some live data again. I just want to just 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 throw some stuff out here. Look at some temperatures here, and go back. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. I want to go back. Oh, you know what I want to check? I want to check my AC because again, as you watch my videos, you know I've had some issues with my uh, with my air conditioning in this car. So, I am going to um, check my um, um the the um. The, uh, the temperature on that, uh, on, that, on that sensor in there in a second. Just give me one second here. I just want to pull up some live data. That, that's enough. Let's just hit show selected. All right, and hit curve combination. We just want to look at the curves. Again, what I'm trying to point out here is that the, the data is very clearly seen on the graph. You can clearly see that red and that yellow trace. I think, let's see, I'm going to try to stretch it out. I don't think you can um, scale this any, but again, you don't, in my opinion, the graph, you don't, it, from what I can tell, I'm not saying you don't need to scale it because if you got that option, that'd be better. But from what I've seen in all the live data I've tested so far, you can see the graphs quite clearly and make a decision quite often based on that graph, which you can, see, for example, like right here. What I want to do, let me go back. I just want to look at one quick thing before I close this video out. Let's go back to the engine control module. Okay, front wheel drive. 
Uh, let's go to live data. Cooling and HVAC data. That's exactly what I want. There we go. Okay, let's see. Let's scroll down. Look at all this. Look, if you want to diagnose your, if you want to look high side pressure sensor, you can put that in different um, high side pressure voltage. I mean, you can put that in different um, units. Engine load. I mean, this is just amazing. Like, if you're just trying to, you can diagnose an AC. Not, not fully, but this can give you some assistance with diagnosing that AC right here. Amazing. I got to say, show selected. And we'll hit curve combination again. I just want to show you if we look at these. Um, and what I do like about it, if you look over here too, the Y axis over here, the yellow has its own scale. And the red also has its own scale. So that way, although these lines look the same, they are not the same because we look here on the, on the Y axis, I mean, um, yeah, on the Y axis here, they each got their own scale and everything is based on the um, X axis over time. Amazing. Nice. And they also got, oh, another little touch is that a lot of times um, you don't see the um, battery voltage just hanging out inside of um, inside of the scan tool unless you specifically look for it. Some scan tools do, some don't, but it's nice to actually have that as well. All right, so let's back out here. All right, so the last thing we're going to just take a quick look at, we're just going to look at the um, report. And we'll take a quick look at the report and we hit OK. I'll show you what that looks like. We go to um, more diagnostic reports. And this is the latest report here. So as you can see, I've used it already several times. Let that pop up and um, it, 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 it got it laid out quite well. All right, so here's the, you can either, you can save it as a PDF and you can extract it from here with the data core that's included in the box. And also, you can also share this as an email as well. So easy to share and all the information that you want to put up top, you can put that in if you want. As you can see, it has all the information here. Um, the modules that we checked is showing some snapshot of the live data. It's not showing everything like in live data form because it's, again, it's a printed piece of paper, sort of. It's just short. Look at that. That's crazy. Oh, how many data peers is this? Man, that is something. How many data peers is this? That is that is 158 data peers. And this here is a 2010. You can only imagine maybe nowadays you got more. This is the transmission. Look at that, all that live data. Look at that. That's amazing. So in other words, and then at the end it shows you what trouble codes it saw. So again. Again, I can't speak enough about just how much you're getting for the price of this tool. And again, do not forget 15% off code additionally to the already low price. Look at that code in the description or the pinned comment. With that said, this here has been the uh, Xtool D5S. Their latest entry into their scan tool family gets my thumbs up. And I hope you do at least check it out. And if you're in the market for a scan tool in this price range, which, are, which is around 100 and I guess 25 to 150 bucks, depending on the sale. And, you, and if you use my code, you should definitely take a look at this unit because trust me, it is really a bang for your buck.